Hello, hello. Hello. James, I will make you the host. There you go. James, I can see your mouth moving, but I can't hear you. Sorry about that. There we go. Yeah, I, I switched headphones there. So let's give it another minute or so for everybody to log in. And it looks like You've got what? 10 people, which is good. Um, hey, Sean, glad you can make it on there. Hello. Let's see. I don't think anybody else is going to join um, this meeting. Looks like we got everybody there. So um, the reason, let me go ahead and toss the agenda up um, as I've got it. Um, and then just kind of walk through why I decided to hold this meeting together. Bigger. Can everybody see the agenda as I've got it on there? Yeah. Yeah. So what um, the reason I called this meeting is that uh, we haven't really had a contributors meeting since last July or June, actually. Um, and my company, which consists of Bill and I and, and another um, part time individual, um, we've been putting a lot of effort into around the 1.0 um code base we've uh, i think we've done a few contributions last year including the go sdk um and we kind of got a little bit worried that uh it was going um to the wayside and then i i heard through duncan of btp that it was going to be um a transition to kind of a um an older archived version and taking off of the main page. And so I wanted to see if there was still interest in working on the 1.0 um, uh, thread. The 2.0 thread, which Sean has been leading um, on there, has been happening for a, a uh, couple of years now and is linked in with their um, code base that, that they put together uh, called Splinter. Um, and transact and um, sawtooth, but um, the one dot o is really the one that a lot of people seem to be working on. Um, I thought I'd just toss one um, particular screen up just to show people uh, how much sawtooth has been uh, used. Um, if you can see, this is you know there's six hundred nine thousand lines of code. But the big thing to me is we have been in the media a lot, almost 5,000 media mentions. Um, but, um, and 4.6 thousand or 4,600 pull requests. So we've, we've had a lot of activity. It slowed down quite a bit over the last year. And I thought I'd put a call out and see, do people want to join in to um, work on the 1X code line? Don't mean to take anything away from the 2.0 code line, but um, I put um, some ideas of what we can do on the 1.0 code line and number two there. And I wanted to basically toss it out and see what people think based on um, this meeting today. Do people like what's happening um, with it in terms of being put off to the side or should we be working on it? Um, more um, as a group and everything else. So, Duncan, go ahead. Um, let's sure. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for convening this. Um, and second of all, yeah, I mean, BTP, amongst other companies, you know, has a vested interest in Sawtooth continuing. And there is, unfortunately, the the sort of the careless talk, talks, careless talk cost lives aspect to this that, you know, it's, you know, there've been mutterings that, oh, well, it's, you know, it's, there's not a huge amount of activity, therefore, um, you know, the next logical step in in Hyperledger land is to make it a dormant project. Um, that can't happen unilaterally, but, you know, that that was a set the alarm bells ringing for us, certainly, because um, if something becomes dormant, essentially it's being downgraded from being incubated to dormant and then if it if it ever emerges from its dormancy whatever that word is it winds up being in incubation stage state again which obviously is would be frankly from our point of view nothing short of a disaster um so so anyway that you know and and the fact it's dormant i guess you could say is you know is is as much you know to do with us as it is to do with anybody else in the We've been doing a lot of work on the on the 1.x branch, um, but haven't um, really focused on contributing that back. Um, and, I, and I don't think there's any issue, by the way, with there being a 1.x and a 2.x version of something. Um, uh, and so, yes, I, 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 I fully support the idea of us, you know, regalvanizing work around 1.x, which is the area that we're most most, you know, Closely associated, blah, muddling up my words. Most closely associated with, so, so I hope that makes sense. So, are there any other thoughts on this? Um, anybody like Arun? You're on the technical steering committee. Do you have any thoughts or Duncan? No other thoughts. Yeah, um, I, I mean, you were you were asking Arun uh, specifically, so I paused there. But yeah, um, I mean, it, it's it's interesting to uh, um, hear the 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 rumors. That's not how you spell my name. Um, yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, about about making it dormant, uh, given that there's been no communication uh, from uh, anybody at Hyperledger. Uh, to that effect towards uh, any of the maintainers, uh, as far as I know. Um, so I, I think that's, um, you know, maybe maybe indicates a uh, maybe deeper uh, hyperledger issue. Um, but in terms of um, the interesting bit of this, uh, which I think is, is rekindling uh, 1.x, you know, I'd like to point out that uh, you know, we've been, you know, active uh, working on, on, you know, version two um, for for quite a while, but we did write version one. <laughs> so, so don't position me as not caring about version one um, um, either, because um, I think the the project health as a whole uh, certainly more important than uh, version one uh, versus uh, version two. Um, and uh, I think given the, the speed at which uh, version two is, is progressing uh, at the moment, um, uh, if there are um, things that we can do to uh, bring version one kind of uh, um, forward and, and really even um, Maybe taking some of the stuff from version two and backporting it. Uh, one of the things on your list is um, abstracting the LMDB database. Uh, that that work's already been done uh, in the Sawtooth. Um, so that's uh, um, you know I would I would encourage that path to be seen more as. Um, uh, making you know one dot three, which would be the de development version of of the one uh, version one branch, um, making uh, version one dot three um, use libsawtooth 
um, and it wouldn't need to use the parts that that don't apply. Uh, but that being a uh, a pretty good roadmap to kind of unifying um, the code between between the branches. If I could jump in, and uh, the few of those contribution ideas are stuff that we already have. I wasn't aware of the saw of the saute database abstraction happening in the sawtooth lib. We have one which needs to be tidied up for the upstream, but for sawdb we have that uh, that we contribute. We have one for the transaction commit cache, and the end. A rocks db implementation behind that it's perfectly okay uh, from my point of view to try to line that up with what's in saw sawtooth lib and look and compare what we have versus the sawtooth lib uh into there it required a fair amount of changes to uh basically life life cycles uh, not lifetimes in a lot of the rust code or to do it to abstract the trade out. So it's we separated out the thinking about the rocks DB versus the, the saw DB just because the the trait is a much more significant change. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. We could do that. The I don't know uh well I guess Rust we can I and I don't know what the state of the sawtooth live is on the current 1.3, meaning right as a, as of this moment in the 1.2, which we base everything off of. It's not in there explicitly. One dot three and one dot two are, are identical. At, pretty at close, this right? current moment, <laughs> yeah, they're almost identical. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of changes that weren't worth releasing. Uh, okay. In three. Um, so we can work to line uh, those up pretty easily, I think. Oh, I would assume it's not that it's not rocket science that one. It, yeah, and the lib sawtooth isn't really tied to um sawtooth 2 in any way in fact it doesn't even have that as as the version number it's it's uh version number is one one dot something or zero dot one something um uh, that was on purpose because it's um uh you know it doesn't really need to follow the same uh uh life cycle as um the sawtooth core uh repository um, but also the the idea of making things reusable is kind of the the point of uh, 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 Lib Sawtooth is you know let's abstract some of these things um, away so that we can make um, uh, you know a library that makes building Sawtooth or or variants on on Sawtooth uh, a lot easier uh, and so. You know, you, you're talking about making uh, that a trait that that's one of the, uh, you know, the, the focuses of that code is doing uh, things like that and then fixing um, other issues. Um, the, the code that's in um, lib sawtooth uh, from a, a, a Rust perspective is uh, far better informed from experience um then uh the uh older rust in 1.3 and so it's gonna it's gonna be a better uh a better place to um kind of move forward with uh given that so like things like life lifetimes and stuff like that um i don't think there are very many lifetimes uh in, in lib sawtooth um uh, at least not not that code um, stuff like that that um, has just advanced with the team's uh, advanced knowledge of Rust. Arun, you got any comments from the TSD side? Um, being really careful on this conversation right now. So <laughs> there are multiple thoughts flowing floating around, right? I wanted to I'm I I want to hear from from all the viewpoints like before making any statements. So any of my statements going forward is purely 
to inquire, not really like an opinion distribution, right? Just trying to understand and sense what's going around. Um, I know like previously I was involved um, to greater conversation details, even the tech conversations, but nowadays I'm unable to due to other activities. However, um, from what I understand is happening, at least I was from since when, I mean, since when I was involved, the 2.0, uh, the approach that Sean was mentioning, the library approach, that's the direction that um, like I liked as well in terms of composability of sawtooth and and um, bringing that modular aspects into the code base, right? However, um, I also understand from your viewpoint that there were a few things that went in with the earlier release or before the refactoring happened. And right. So, um, I mean, I do have some thoughts around it, but um, like my question to either um, of these comments is, is there a way, like for, for maybe for first, right? So James, question to you. Do you think uh, the, the features that you want to bring in, um, is there a merit in adopting that to sort of library or that uh, version of code? Like what's the effort involved and what's, why it's not possible? I think it's case. Yes, sir. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. I think it depends on what's what the the changes involved, right? So, from and I'm, this is speaking from our perspective, PTP in particular, where when we work on the changes and the features, it tends to be stuff that we're particularly uh, interested in as a business. So we're so therefore we're doing it off of the the line that we're supporting, which is the one dash two. The so that tends to be our first protocol. It also tends to be that's uh, also for a lot of it tends to involve the Python code more than anything else. So even if we do like take this RDB stuff, there are Python changes that have to go along with that. The we can do stuff in the Sawtooth lib, but the 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 heavy part has to be well, sorry, the the the, the payoff is in the Sawtooth core for one dot three or one dash one dash x whatever. The, so there's not a problem with it at all. Whether it's important or not is a different, uh, whether it's important to do it in Sawtooth Lib, I, depends on the content of the change, I would think, right? SawDB obviously uh, wasn't aware of the DB abstraction stuff in Sawtooth Lib, so that's uh, that's a good one. But the, for instance, another thing, which is, uh, which we have in mind, not on this list, which is, uh, another abstraction thing, which is abstracting out the, which, I don't know if it's progressed in Sawtooth Lib or not, uh, is abstracting out the identity signer stuff, uh, but we need that to work in 1-2. I guess the way we would like to go about things is doing our contributions from the 1.x and then porting it forward, uh, as opposed to do it on do it on 2.x and then figuring out a way how to, to carve it apart and put it in 1.x the other way. Um, but there's no philosophical disagreement with abstracting everything out into a library it seems to be the right thing to do. Yeah, but. from our, our perspective is we've, it's just basically Bill and I, and Bill can comment on this, but we're using Sawtooth as a back store um, to store documents in. Um, and um, we've been using a different consensus service, which we're gonna uh, need to figure out how to push that up um, so that it can be used by everybody, which is we're using the um, Hedera consensus service and we're using it in a more complete manner than say Fabric did when it was uh, started in there. Um, we're being sponsored by the Hedera um, Foundation in order to do that. And we're using that as our consensus so we have a public consensus with a private back store and we're using one dot X code base for that. And that's why we haven't um, pushed into lip sawtooth or any of that um, other stuff um, in there. And we just haven't had frankly time, which is why we did our go library. We've done some other contributions. We're about ready to put some other ones in. Um, so from our perspective, it's important to keep working on the one dot uh, X as it is 
before going into lip sawtooth. Um, and Bill, do you want to say anything on that? You're muted. Thanks. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I just want to reinforce this this thing. So you know, um, all of it seems that all of the people outside of the maybe the core group who are contributing or doing work on Satu is doing are doing the work sort of um, as line of business work, right? But the improvements are coming in because we we need them in order to build the applications that we're building that we're actually trying to commercialize or 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 release to the public. Um, so from that perspective, I think it really does make sense for that a lot of these innovations and improvements end up in 1.x first, because that's that's the place where it's going to be able to be leveraged the quickest, especially because you know it's no, you know 2.0, it's not it's not ready for prime time, I guess is the best way of, of saying that. And there's a lot of existing code and there's a lot of existing experience on 1.x. So it does make sense for things to go for, to go into that. Um, I also support the idea of taking the best of these um, improvements and porting them forward into libsawtooth. That, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, maybe there will come a, a time where sawtooth 2.0 is ready for production is ready to, to be building um, serious applications on top of it. And, you know, we would not want to lose all of these, these improvements that we've, um, that various members of the community have done to the content of the system. So that, I, that's, that's mostly what I wanted to say. I just wanted to, to reinforce that. Um, we, um, yeah, can I, can I, uh, yeah, go ahead. For a second. Uh, I'm not proposing that uh, um, any of these things go on stop to two um, at all. Um, the uh, but here we're proposing a new library, SawDB. Uh, I don't support that um, just because it's more overhead and maintenance, and we already have a place to do that work, which is LibSawTooth. So I feel like uh, you know if we're talking about uh, keeping that stuff in core, not creating a new library, uh, then essentially it's, um, you know, would be, um, you know, adding some technical debt uh, if the overall uh, direction is to try to um, separate that stuff out into a library. What I'm proposing is that uh, we start to see LibSawTooth as uh, a Rust library that's used by uh, uh, version 1.3. So there, there are pieces of things in LibSawTooth that we wouldn't want to adopt um, for sure, um, or not, not, in their, not in its current form. Um, there's a lot of, uh, for example, uh, there's transacts in there. Um, and the, well, while that's great, it doesn't support uh, transaction processors currently right so ignore that part of of the library um but when we're talking about the back end for doing um uh merkle tree stuff that's um uh that's that's an easier piece to separate out and say like okay we can as a as a group create one uh implementation of that uh and and collaborate on it on it moving forward. Uh, I'm just suggesting that the, the place to do that is in WebSocket, uh, if it's a library. I don't think that's as controversial as it may sound, honestly. The, the, what we have as an implementation of that already, it's already a separate crate, just happens to be inside of the Sawtooth core library. It shouldn't be that big of a deal to lift and shift it out. Uh, but if there's stuff already there, it also shouldn't be that big of a deal because everything's already buying a trade to migrate over to it and then have it be supported. So right. I don't think and, that's that's not really a problem. And the changes that you've done to the Python code and stuff like that are probably things that we um, re require uh, to do that that transition generally, right? To, to adopt the sawtooth would be very similar to uh, what you already have, um, and, and the details would be in. Okay, what's the trait look like? 
what are the changes um, between what you have and what's in Libsaki? And that would be the activity is, is reconciling those. Uh, I'd rather see um, collaboration uh, between um, uh, between this group um, than not. Uh, I think you know we've been very fragmented uh, in in the past where where we do have uh, some activity that's not um, been brought into the project because we're kind of all working separately. Uh, and I'd like to see. I'd like to see that change moving forward. Uh, and if that means, you know, a greater focus on uh, the one.x code base, um, uh, then uh, yeah, I can support that. That sounds good to me. Um, I'm I'm not a technologist when it comes to the actual, the, the, the code base and the contributions and so on, but it, do, it does feel like if if there's a way of collaborating where um we can bring in or at least propose some of the changes that have that have been made and are actually in running in production elsewhere um and then have a sensible conversation about you know how that wor works practically speaking with what's uh what's available through sorted lib um but the, i tend to agree with um what Bill was saying, which is, you know, we have something that today we know works and uh, has had a, a lot of improvements, and we'd love to see those improvements find their way into the 1.x um, arena, and and then obviously have a sensible collaborative discussion about, you know, the pros and cons of one approach versus another, or whether it is that big of a deal, as Kevin was saying. So, um, may I? Yes, so, please. So, I, I don't know. I was holding on to commenting this for, for a while now. But uh, so it looks like everybody is willing to collaborate on what the, the feature set, at least. That's, what, that's clearly evident from the conversation that nobody is saying that we don't need certain features. It's just a matter of reorganizing code and which library to put what kind of crates and all of those discussions. And I'm sure like these things have a logical ending uh, if we discuss it through. Uh, uh, like, if we take this up on a separate call and then discuss through, there will be logical ending into these conversations, right? Now, um, and like, there is also a general agreement and or a sense that I could see on this call is that um, the collaboration is is, I mean, at least the proposal that I hear is uh, that you want to put down the code that you have with you, uh, right, James and Bill and, and Kevin maybe, and um, like you are willing to support it on a longer term basis and, and through maintenance and that support is not necessarily just restricted to that version, but rather it's forward looking in the sense you are willing to collaborate for the future releases that um, like the current maintainers have vision for. And of course, there will be arguments in few cases that, hey, this is already implemented in certain way. Should it be redone or should we model the feature that you have and change a bit to adopt to our version, right? So those kind of conversation do happen at the feature level. And I'm sure there will be logical end to those conversations as well going forward. And that will be an ongoing basis, right? And, and I, I don't know, it's just a thought process can we think of a mechanism where I know some of the other projects have two release um, um, approach rates. So for instance, Aero has one and Aero has two. Um, even they are changing the language of implementation and some of the production systems are continuing to use one where they work on two. And there is plan for deprecation and there is plan for migration of features and all, of, all that. And similarly, I know some of the other projects, they do two releases within the project itself in an incremental uh, feature release fashion, right? So they say um, maybe like release one dot something does not have certain features, two dot something has certain features, but they differ, they are breaking changes. And we do have com like core set of maintainers supporting both releases. And these are just suggestions from different projects, what we have been seeing now. And uh, I mean, since on this call, there is a general agreement 
I'm not, I don't know, maybe Sean, this is a question to you. If something like this works out for everyone, is that something that you can think is doable? For instance, it's it can be something like 1.2. Dot, dot, um, uh, like a one dot two dot alternate release, right? Does not necessarily need to be a one dot three something, because one dot three, as you said, it, you want to more adopt it to a uh, sorted library. So it could be one like a branch derived out of whatever is the well, branch. That, that's what one dot. That's what one dot three is. Uh, I'm proposing a path forward that I think, you know, if. Um, uh, where where I think we, we can collaborate uh, the best uh, in terms of uh, focus around um, you know an, an, an existing area uh, based on, on work that, that's uh, already been done um, that that we collaborate and not kind of fork off in different directions. Um, uh, to the extent that, like, uh, I, I guess I don't really support um, the idea of like a 1.x and, and two different maintainer sets. I think that's too complicated for the amount um, of uh, interest that we have generally uh, in Sawtooth that feels very, um, very heavyweight. Um, I think if the, if the interest here is to uh, further 1.x, then that, then that's where we uh, then that's where we expend uh, the effort uh, for for this group. Small um, correction, and John. So, sorry, yeah, small everyone. correction. I never. Go sorry, ahead. I never proposed that we have two maintainer sets. Sorry, if I interpreted in that oh, way. I, I thought that uh, was your I, example I with the Roja. Oh no. Um, okay, maybe Araho was a bad example then. So I was not proposing having two maintainer site. Like the maintainer site would remain the same, but maybe for one dot um, x, the features that you are bringing in um, will be adopted. And of course, for later releases, there will be improvements done based on your suggestions, which James and the company will um, spend efforts towards. Right, and it will be eventual effort instead of the one go effort initially itself. Well, I, I think there's there's a few things that are kind of commingled in there. One is I think we need to kind of expand our, our maintainers a bit. Um, but two, we need to have people answering on um, questions that have come up, because I think the questions have pretty much dribbled to a stop because no one's answering them. I think that's one of the main issues. Um, and Bill and I haven't had time in order to answer them, um, but we need to make our effort to make sure that we um, answer and bring that forward. Um, we're hoping uh, we've been in um, using government grants for the last four years working around Sawtooth. This time we're working on a commercial version and we hope we'll bring a lot more people looking at uh, Sawtooth because Hedera actually needs a backstore in a bad way. And if we can actually launch it properly, that would make Sawtooth a backstore for the Hedera uh, consensus service, um, which would bring a lot more people um, into the uh, project. But if no one's working on it, if no one's contributing, if, if it looks dead, it will stay dead. So we need to start livening it up, both with contributions, but also people answering questions. And it's not a thing on you, Sean, or anything else, because you guys have been carrying the, the mother load of that for the last uh, several years, but all of us need to step up um, and start answering some of the questions um, quickly because the speed of answering those questions um, keeps people involved and who knows where these people are coming from. For a while, they were coming from extremely large companies looking at it, um, and I think they've kind of faded away. And I think there's a lot that Sawtooth actually can offer that nobody um, no other project can can offer especially around consensus and 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 the fact that it's it's segmented in in a lot of different ways so you can really um, adapt it a lot um differently than any other project and you know splinter takes it even further than that um but 
I think the short term problem is we need people that are um, we need more contributions, we need more people to answer questions, and we need probably another maintainer or two that um, can step up and, and be helping besides Sean and VTP or Bitwise, I'm sorry, um, being the only people working on it. I think we need to expand ourselves beyond there. So the, that was the purpose of this call from my perspective is to get interest back, to get us working on something and then start scheduling meetings so that we can start hitting this um, on a more consistent basis than we have. Um, and it sounds like, you know, Kevin um, is willing to do that. Sean sounds like he's willing to do that. I know Bill and I are to the extent that we can. Um, I don't know if there's other people that are willing to step up that are, are not in any of those three organizations or, or not. Um, I don't think we're going to solve the problems here, but I think we're going to uh, get a, a, a good head start on there. Um, do people have other comments? So just uh, to throw out, I brought, it's not just me from BTP, but I brought three people on this call and who are going to be doing the contributions actually from us forward, but it's also I'm volunteering them if they haven't realized already that they're there to watch the Sawtooth channels and and either try to answer the questions or track down people that can do on the Discord uh, today. So we're, we'll throw our hands in that as well. Yeah, I think Good. in terms of like maintainers, um, uh, I agree, we need more maintainers. A lot of the maintainers that we have on the list um, uh, uh, probably won't contribute in the future, uh, if I have my guess. So um, the uh, list of maintainers is, uh, of active maintainers uh, is fairly low at the moment. I think, um, you know, the best way to become a maintainer is get stuff merged in. Um, uh, you know, we've discussed adding uh, Bill as a maintainer to the, the Sawtooth or the Sawtooth Go SDK, right, which I support. Um, you know, that's easy, but it's easy because there's contributions, right? Um, and so I would just expect that problem to solve itself as we start to merge some of this stuff in. Where if the discussion that we're having is um, one of, you know, what what threshold metric do we use before we make someone a maintainer? Like what, how many contributions over what period of time? Um, if that's the discussion that we're having, I think we're in a better place than uh, than we are now, because um, because that's the stuff that we can discuss as as a, a community and and make decisions around. Well, I, I agree. I think that um, it's going to be based on what contributions come in and how well people are working on it. But I just, I wanted to push that out as, as something that needs to happen. Um, and I feel bad because we just haven't been as active as we'd like to be because we've been slammed with other, other stuff on there. But um, I felt the need to try to see what I could do to reignite the, the community. And it sounds like we've got at least three companies worth on here. Um, I don't know where everybody's from, but um, I'd like to have a, a 1.3 on the Discord if we could. Um, because if, if I go into the, the, the Discord that we have, uh, now I'm going to lose it um, on here. But if you look, so Fabric has tons and tons of and all of these have tons and tons of stuff, but we don't have much going on um, in terms of Sawtooth. And you know, we got announcements, contributors, and basic Sawtooth. Maybe we can do one on 1.3 and start there by adding think, yet another. I think the channels are dormant as they are. I would actually go the other way and say we don't even have enough ch uh, chatter for one channel. Yeah. Um, well, or for two I channels, agree. right? Where we should go down to just one Sawtooth channel. To, to your point about monitoring and answering questions and stuff like that, and like the channel feeling dormant, that's because we have too many channels uh, at the moment uh, for the amount of uh, chatter. Because it's one thing if uh, someone asks a question that isn't easy to answer and it scrolls off. And another thing, which is what happens now where there's not 
enough discussion in the channel for that to ever scroll off, uh, right? So the the question, and, and there's a time period where it's like, uh, there's not enough discussion uh, generally uh, to warrant uh, checking it every day. And so like you check it and it's like, oh, that was maybe even an easy one to answer, but you know, it's, um, uh, you know, it's been sitting there so long that the person probably um, uh, isn't really looking for an answer anymore. Um, so I think part of what we can do, I don't think more channels is the answer because I don't think more dormant channels is um, impressive. We don't we don't currently use the contributor uh, uh, channel very much. Um, you know, case in point, uh, none of this stuff was discussed on the channel before the meeting. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's a sign in it in and of itself that like, um, you know, we're not really using, uh, the channels in, in the way we should, right. It, it shouldn't be a mystery when we meet what we're meeting about. It should be like, we're, we're meeting because we have to have a discussion about the stuff that like we've been discussing async and we want a synchronous touch point where everyone can, uh, very quickly. Uh, get on the same page um, and maybe make decisions. Uh, but really the primary uh, uh, method of communication really should be uh, discord in my opinion. Um, these meetings are great, but um, but only so much as they coordinate up things that that we otherwise are are doing, I think. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I was kind of surprised when I put something up and nobody really said anything um, on there. I, I, I'm just trying to get things going um, and, and get us discussing it. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, just not to hack it, but the Discord switch over, which is not this project's fault, was a bit disruptive. And so we basically didn't follow along with it when I went through it, so that's part of it. I agree that we don't need more channels. Let's fill up the challenge channels we have already uh, before we start breaking them off. Uh, that's okay. that's all just sensible, but that's my principal concern is, I believe that that's the flow of changes has stopped. I, I also believe that there are more folks than us out there in the world that have interesting things that they've done with the the collection of sawtooth projects that we're not getting basically just because uh, the focus has shifted uh, or had shifted elsewhere so if we shift back to get them coming in could be my foolish optimism but i think it's a good optimism then i think we'll be in better shape yeah and I, yeah absolutely and i and i think that just starts with us you know the people that are on this call chatting because uh, yeah, yeah. chatting there, because you know that that if we do, uh, if we go through some of this stuff, you know, we can talk about these traits and go and go back and forth, and uh, you know, maybe compare the traits, or put a branch up to start the discussion or 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 whatever, and like just kind of just get into it. I think uh, the people that that are lurking that won't say anything. Um, you know, oftentimes if the channel doesn't have enough uh, traffic, people will not say things because they don't want their comment to be the the comment that's out there for um, uh, for for a month, right? Um, so if we uh, if we liven it up ourselves, uh, my theory is that like it will just become um, uh, more active and not just us there's more people on the channel for sure and i'm in agreement i think these things that i put out there just as just the staking ground should be taken to the channels um i i just want to make sure there's no high priority bugs or issues we need to talk about now or they should be able to be taken to the to channels and i think the the other thing that i wanted to get out of this is when should we schedule the next meeting um and i think a month from now we can see how well um actions are happening on discord um and we could schedule it out far enough that people can put it on their calendar and make sure they can make it um so that's yeah, what i, I wanted to get even that if we can throw throw some dates out there and um we could 
We could even use that discussion as a way to generate traffic in that, that control channel. Hey, does this date work? Yes. Because like today worked. Uh, my, my preference is it would be an hour later. Uh, you know, if that doesn't work, um, you know, it's uh, <laughs> just I had to get up early to um, to attend this meeting, which is fine uh, if that's the only time that works. But if we coordinate uh, um, a time and a day, then uh, we can make sure that at least when we when we plan it, that it'll actually work for us. Uh, let's let's put that up on 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 the channel. Um, I'm. 99% of the time I'm mountain time. So this would be 7 a.m. my time start pretty early. So um, I, I was trying to get something I could attract people to. So um, that being said, um, the, do people have other comments um, on what we should be doing or should we take it to the channel and just start seeing what we get back? I'm trying to keep it in an hour. Um, and we're at 47 minutes now. I think I, I have one other question, which is, uh, you know, we're talk, talking, like one of the things that uh, historically we've, um, you know, put a lot of effort into, and it's, it's on my mind um, uh, uh, quite a bit lately, but like the, um, you know, when we're talking about 1.3, What's the importance of releases versus just being in the in the branch? Um, I'd like to get a sense for that. Doing the the releases of that one dot x uh, code is uh, non trivial and extremely time consuming. And so I have two questions: one, are releases important, or are you forking the branch anyway? And so so releases aren't aren't um, aren't all that important, or are they important? They're, impo they're important for like uh, um, uh, maybe community wise, but but I, I'm curious um, for the people here how how important releases are, uh, and then uh, whether uh, um, uh, there can be a commitment to help with um, with some of that. Um, maybe CI release management stuff. So I can or a give, sense for whether people are willing to contribute, I guess is what I mean, not a commitment. So I, so I can give a pretty detailed uh, description of, of the good and the bad of that, actually. the From the standpoint of, this is a BTP as all, well, do we care about the Hyperledger Docker images tag releases? Not particularly, but that's because we build our own, because we have different enhancements around the image and things like that and we're running off of a fork with our enhancements already right that said the and so from that standpoint the we don't super care about the formal release process up there however because the version number is so wired in to the build in a lot of places in so many places actually uh the tagging of the release is the most important thing for us um I should also throw in just because you threw in the CI thing, like we run a whole separate CI and we build uh, publicly actually uh, the both the, the main lines and all, all the standard branches and also our release branches on a public Jenkins already. The So, I mean, we know the ins and outs of it very well. The In terms of a source only thing, obviously that's what you do with the Rust libraries, really the binary stuff i don't know there's uh it's it's a wider issue around the build actually and what to do with the builds so i, I guess given given that information i would say i could go either way on that question it's, it's more about the being consistent about what it goes all the way through like there is another conversation i think in uh, the last eoc tsc update around the docker image builds and again, it's like I can sort of see both sides of, of that in terms of, uh, I think you had a back and forth with a room, Sean, about little back and forth, tiny, if you don't remember, it's not surprising, uh, about the building in Dockers versus don't building in the Dockers. And 
that's honestly something we struggle with both ways. We tend to focus on the building via Dockers just because that gives us our guaranteed product at the end. However, it's annoying uh, to have to do that all the time because it can be time consuming. It's it's a big it's a big discussion topic actually is what I'm saying. It's a good collab discussion topic. But the versioning itself, versioning of the tree, I think is important just to go back to known sets and the validating out the CI, CIs and having knowing that everything runs to a certain good step is fine. If you're referring to the the weight of the release, are you thinking of like those uh, those long run tests and things that we ran previously, or just just the build and pushing out and publishing and stuff? Because I don't think we've done a, a long life test for quite a while, really. Yeah, and that that was maybe the majority of the effort for. Uh, 1.2 is the um, the extent to which we tested it before we put out a release. Um, Bitwise is not in a position to do any of that uh, testing mm -hmm. uh, in future releases. Um, uh, just because we don't have that environment set up, we have um, we probably have some Terraform and stuff for recreating it um, that we could share. Um, but uh, um, and this is this is why I wouldn't want to put out another 1.2, even with minor changes, is that I think, um, it, it, like, uh, it, it would be hard to test. Like, like we could, if there was like a security thing or something, you know, we could push that that out. But let, but I mean, like, you know, any anything substantial. Whereas 1.3, well, at least we didn't break 1.2, right? Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that sense of because uh, there's definitely a lot in one dot uh, uh, in one dot three that you know when we when we uh, uh, work on the the um, pluggable Merkle tree stuff, right? Does that introduce a memory leak? You're not going to know if you don't do one of those long running tests. I mean, you might find out in your production environments, um, but that's probably not the place you want to find out about it. So it's stuff like that that like um, uh, um, that I would be concerned about uh, in terms of um, kind of the lack of that that currently for the one dot uh, really one dot just version one branches uh, in general, because uh, it's not set up. Well, let's have a look at it, honestly, uh, and see what the long running tests are and see, see what we can do with it. Uh, we have infrastructure we can put forward. We could probably get stuff from Hyperledger too if we, wanted it, if we got it settled, but we can certainly put together the, uh, sorry, Linux Foundation, I guess, gives out the stuff, but the, we can put together the whole run we have a sort of priority on making sure that anyone that does anyone that uh, uses uses our forks of everything, not just Sawtooth, they have to be able to run it all themselves. So totally happy to work with that and put it out and make sure that kind of anybody can inspire up the the long run test would be the goal. Well, let's do it. Let's talk about it. It's, it's a bigger thing than we can answer in this call, right? But it's but absolutely. Right? Um, and we have a bunch of tools as well for like running those networks that mm -hmm. were a little too specific to to check into um, to check into Sawtooth itself. But um, you know whether whether that stuff is, is interesting or not, um, uh, I don't know. But like uh, CLI is for spinning up entire networks uh, and running running tests and stuff like that. Um, uh, with like a CLI with like tooled with Terraform underneath it uh, and stuff like that. Um, so that that exists. Uh, we can um, share that to, to anybody that's willing to kind of take that. Sure. We've also got on if if that's interesting. Uh, maybe you're you're already set up to do be. enough testing. Um, then... Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. Let's I the uh we're, we tend to focus on helm charts so we're a lot of our stuff 
And the so far proprietary stuff that we have is all Helm chart based. Helm chart based is kind of hard to say proprietary really, but the uh, we're not too far off of open sourcing that stuff as well. So we could probably uh, take those and maybe take some of the sex specific stuff out of that and contribute that. That's anyway, that's just another ingredient that we can possibly take use of. We're very Kubernetes focused, so everything for us is always going to run to Kubernetes. But, uh, but my point is it's a it's a good active area uh, to talk about. So let's let's do it. John, did you have another thing you wanted to bring through? Well, I was going to say in terms of like the my comment about getting rid of Docker, uh, my plan is to start with uh, um, Lib Sawtooth and just simplify that. There's no reason to use Docker in that in that context. It just makes sense. Well, it's a Rust great, right? Yeah, it's a Rust great, right? You don't need to. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, our use of Docker didn't, uh, you know, kind of grew up from the 1.x branch where, uh, you know, we were trying to solve the problem of having a stable Python environment. So Docker actually makes a little bit more sense uh, uh, in 1.x than it does uh, outside that context. Um, unfortunately, that 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 does uh, it's done in such a way that it's it's hard to get things built or working without it, even doing stuff manually. So, um, uh, so that's the stuff I want to clean up. Uh, in terms of just simplifying it. Um, uh, it it's, really, it's, really, it's really more about the CI stuff and kind of approachability from a developer perspective than it is like the end result, whether we publish the, the, the Docker uh, image at the end uh, or not um, uh, it is like a completely separate thing, but just like kind of the maintenance uh of doing releases and stuff like that well let's um, take a lot of this uh, on on the list and then talk through it so that everybody can see what we're doing and how how come we're doing it um i'm just trying to keep the call within an hour and yeah sounds good and then push it in, into discord from there this i mean we basically have been the kevin and sean discussion here. Um, anybody else have thoughts, questions? So um, <clears throat> we're trying to wrap it up now. Um, I just want to make, um, just, just say a couple of things. Um, the, uh, the first is that, Sean, I'm definitely willing to um, take on that role of, of maintainer for the, the, the Go SDK. There's really nobody else contributing to it actively except for us, I don't think, right now. And we, we have, um, we, I have a pulse, another small patch set pending. So whatever we have to do to move towards that, um, I'm definitely willing to, to take that on. Um, and the second is I just wanted to take like two minutes to, to mention, you know, sort of, um, not really, not, not so much as to make it a, a shameless plug is sort of to g give an idea of why we're working towards these things with, with Sawtooth. So we're working on, uh, essentially being able to put Sawtooth in the role of a public permissioned blockchain, right? So instead of just, you know, solely enterprise with solely, you know, very carefully controlled consensus like PBFT and, and whatnot, we're, we're building an application that is putting Sawtooth in, in the role of, you know, you have um, a number of validators all over the internet, um, membership is still controlled and permissioned like some of the other, the big, big, um, blockchains, uh, but that we're able to handle sort of a throughput of a chain deployed like that. And I, I do want to mention that um, I've, I've been working sort of um, closely with Kevin over the last year or two with maybe a little bit, a little bit more with his updates to Sawtooth and, and the, um, moving over to RocksDB, his various other optimizations have made a huge difference in stability and throughput of of um, Sawtooth uh, 1.2 line. And it's sort of, um, that work is, is really part of what's making this current application that we're building even, even possible because um, that there's, you know, there's some things in Sawtooth 1.2 that 
for example, dependent transactions are, are actually really broken under volume is just an example. Um, and that some of that stuff ended up getting fixed in, indirectly through work, work Kevin has done. So I just wanted to sort of give an idea of, you know, where we're coming from with this. And by the way, the, the work on the, using the Hedera consensus service as a, as a, a global consensus mechanism is, is part of that. And we do have that working today, you know, albeit in a, a beta capacity, we're able to, we're able to run nodes on the internet and use the, the Hedera consensus service as sort of the source of truth for coordinating Sawtooth and all that works pretty nicely together. So, you know, not so much as, you know, on the, the direct development side, but, but as a, just sort of a, a testimony to the work that Kevin's been doing and, you know, the work sort of the, the, the feedback loop that we've been um, sort of running as far as us testing it out very thoroughly and um, um, his, his improvements. So it, it's been a positive thing. And I think that, you know, Sawtooth really will work well in this role, especially, you know, with, with some of these, these changes and fixes and improvements that are, that are you know, that have been worked on. Um, and I think, you know, um, if, 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 if our, if our current project succeeds, it'll actually be a really nice, um, really nice, uh, bunch of visibility for the software project in general. Yeah. And we're going to contribute that back uh, in, into the project once we have it kind of, um, we're the Hedera stuff, you people, mean, yeah, the Hedera stuff, yeah, the we're Hedera actually, stuff. we're, we're, we're about to run sort of a, a pretty big test and, you know, if, if it survives that um we're gonna we're gonna contribute that back as yeah. a sort of a new a new a new consensus project and we'll you know point everybody yeah, to it yeah that's contractually um part of our contract with Adara that we open it back to sawtooth but anyway that okay. that's just an aside yeah. um on a on a practical note with that i i remember you talked about it on the rocket chat way back when bill but did you open up and publish your in key test that your your performance driving test Oh, no, but okay. I should. I really should. Let you me write should. That down. So if anybody's not familiar, Bill's got this uh, driver program that, that's fairly configurable. It is, is a pretty mean test of Sawtooth when it goes through. So it it, it pushes things pretty hard and, and raises things. So it would be good to have that in the toolbox. And it actually, it actually you know, um, um, it, it can actually bring almost any Sawtooth 1.2 mainline build to its knees within about within 20 minutes because of the dependent transaction bugs that I, that I mentioned, <laughs> if you, if you set up a dependent transaction um, test, it, it basically kills production sawtooth. You have to re reboot all the nodes. It'd be, uh, how long does that take to run? Well, 20 minutes, you said, right? But yeah, less than 20 minutes. If it's, if it's, um, you know, it, less than 20 minutes, sometimes it happens within five minutes, but it, it there's, is a bit of randomness to it. But it usually kills <laughs> it. Your, your your builds don't die, right? But the but the main line but, does. But yeah, we we should bring that chat over to um, after we push it out, Bill. Let's let's plan on pushing that out. Yeah. Um, and then um, the people have any other questions for this? The room's dropped off. I think um, Ryan's going to have to the ride's going to have to drop off in a sec. So we're going to need to drop. Anybody else have any? parting thoughts no well thanks and hopefully i just i wanted to spark conversation it sounds like we're well on our way so let's see what we can do on discord and then we'll plan another meeting from there and thank you all for for showing up thank you thank you